you can basically uh, construct an action where you, you, whatever you like, whatever you like, you can construct an action which can have this space. As its fixed points. What do you mean space? So you can construct, I mean, choose the arbitrary separation components or whatever. Okay? And then there exists an action where the fixed point set is this given. So it's Murphy's law, right? It's Murphy's okay. law for 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 fixed points. Yeah, you can it can be as bad as you like. Uh, no, you. Yeah. We It can be bad. Maybe it's. <laughs> uh, okay, but for me they're very very good. <laughs> okay. All right. So um, so this is what I was saying earlier. So. Um, to take advantage of this idea that the, the point is supposed to be uh, that this is easy and then we had this ring that I wanted to compute and I have injected it into something which is in principle easy. Okay? Um, so that, that is what I just said with the starred equation earlier, uh, the co corollary of Borel. Okay? And so to take advantage of this, of course, we need now to determine the image. Uh, so, does it make sense? I've injected my ring into a larger ring, um, and so to describe my ring, I just need to say what is what what is it that I have hit in the bigger ring? Okay. All right. Very good. Um, okay. Uh, before I go on to to do this, let me at least write down one example of what kind of pictures. <coughs> you might expect to see starting tomorrow. Actually, not tomorrow, later today, in fact. Um, but I just want to put this up. It would be a nice discussion later. So S1 acts diagonally on S2 cross S2. So on each piece, it is the standard action, yeah? So I have the sphere, round sphere. S1 is just uh, twirls around the z-axis, so it's a standard action. I, I, but I give myself two copies, and it's just a diagonal action. Okay? Acts diagonally on, on both factors, the standard action. Oh, uh, when do I stop today? Four, right? We do start. There's a colloquium at four, so I should start. Bef yes. I should end before, it so everybody can. Yes, yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So all right. S one acts diagonally. Very good. Um, and then, oh, let me call this M. Let me call this T. Okay. So in this case, is there something wrong? Are you sure? Okay. Okay. Um, uh, okay. So in this case, you can just think about what is the action. And you convince yourself that there are, in fact, four isolated points which are fixed. It's the North Pole, North Pole, North Pole, South Pole, etc. Okay, so MT is four isolated points. It's the North Pole, North Pole, North Pole, South Pole, etc. Two more, which I will not write. <laughs> okay. All right. And um, now, uh, please recall... I said earlier that HS1 of a point is a polynomial ring in one variable. Yeah, because it's just CP infinity. So it's just polynomial ring in one variable. Um, and in this case, because it is four isolated points, this is a very simple ring. It's just four copies of C. Okay, and I have, so I have, in, in, in other words, what I have is four copies of polynomial ring in one variable. Okay, so with that in mind, I write this more uh, in detail later, but I just want to give this example. Okay, so therefore, um, HS1 of, uh, okay, maybe I write it this way. Okay, so this is nothing other than four copies of CU, yeah? So therefore, when I ask what is the image of I star, I should be giving you a list of four polynomials in one variable. 
Okay? And now, without explaining why I draw it this way, I will draw you some examples. And then later on, we will come back to why I draw it this way. Okay? But I just want to give you some examples to have in your mind. Okay? So, once again, please understand, I, I don't justify why I draw this picture the way I do. We will come back to it later. Okay, so I draw it this way. Okay, and each of these uh, vertices of these rectangles, I think of them as the uh, four isolated fixed points. And so if I'm giving a list of four polynomials, I write it by uh, decorating each vertex with a polynomial. Okay, so for example, this one. That's not very exciting. It's the constant one polynomial. But now I could also have something like this, 0, 0, u, u. I could also have something like this, 0, 0, u, u. And I could also have something like 0, 0, 0, u squared. OK. For those of you who uh, have seen some other uh, some, some symplectic geometry, for example. Uh, let me just say, so just for those people uh, who have seen uh, some moment maps, the reason I draw it this way, in case you wonder, is because these are the moment map image, this is the moment map image of P1 cross P1 under the T2 action, the standard T2 action. Of course, I'm restricting to a subtorus action here, but never mind. I can just think about the moment map image, and these are precisely the fixed points. Um, so that's why I draw it this way. Um, and I come back to this example later, I promise. <laughs> okay? Okay. But anyway, here are some examples. This is the point. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. So. All right. So now for the part two. Yeah? So, so up till now, um, as I say, um, for the future, for the, for the next week, um, the, the ideas that Juliana uh, and I have been thinking about, for us, we have spaces where so far everything I have said is valid. Okay, but now I come to territory where in our particular examples that we want to study, it is not. But anyway, I come back to that next week. Okay, so Goreski, Kotwitz, Pearson. Okay, so this is very long to write, so everybody abbreviates. Very good. Okay, so now I will address this issue. What is the image? Okay, very good. Okay, so now I will allow myself to make further simplifying assumptions. Okay, and once again, they will be valid for our Schubert calculus uh, examples. Okay, so uh, to describe So this is this parenthetical sorry, comment is just to in assure you that it is valid for all the Schubert calculus that I want. Okay, um, okay before I go on, um, again, I, I am very much hoping that maybe some of you will be interested enough in what I'm talking about that you want to study it yourself or do some work in it. Um, and if some of you decide that, then I'm very happy. But um, if you go and dig in the literature, you will find that it is a mess. I just want to warn you right now. Okay, so, um, so for those of you who are thinking to actually work in this area, I just want to uh, uh, tell you right now, there, first of all, when somebody says GHM methods or GCAM technique, you have to ask which one do you mean. Okay, so there are many versions. Okay, the terminology and the not notation is unfortunately not consistent. And the literature, as I say, is a bit of a mess. So I apologize in advance as a representative of this area, but there's not much you can do at some stage. <laughs> um, okay, but that is, as I say, it is a parenthetical comment for anybody who really is interested. Okay, 
Now let's go on. Here's the first assumption. Okay. All right. So this is uh, what we were speaking earlier. Um, so MT consists of finitely many isolated points. So, so therefore, this part is very trivial. Okay, so it consists of finitely many, uh, well, okay, actually I don't need finitely many, but just isolated. Okay, so that's the first comment. And so now I actually write it out more, uh, more generally or more explicitly. That means by what we said earlier, okay, so in other words, I just have one copy of the polynomial ring for every point in this, uh, in, in the fixed point. So I, this is isomorphic to just, I sum over the points in this, uh, in this fixed point set, um, the polynomial ring in however many variables I need for the torus that I'm working with. Okay? Ring, 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 ring. Yeah, 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 yeah. ring, ring, rings, as rings. Yeah, yeah. That meant, yeah, it is, I, I really mean that as a ring. And it's, uh, by the way, it's the obvious module structure. I mean, each, each copy is, I mean, yeah, it's the obvious one. You just multiply by the constant on all, on all, the, uh, on all the factors. Yeah? Okay. Very good. Very good. Okay, let's see. All right. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, to state my next assumption, I should uh, make some terminology. So let me do that now. So terminology. Uh, now observe... For every point, so please remember, I'm, I'm doing isolated points now as my assumption. For every point, because this is a T fixed point, I have automatically a T action on the tangent space at that point. Because yeah, it's fixed, so of course it acts on the tangent space. So we have the so-called isotropy weights. Four. on the tangent space. Okay? So what do I mean? I just mean that, well, here is a representation of a torus. I can decompose this as a T representation, and I can ask what are the weights. Okay? So, of course, since T is abelian, so this is where I'm really using that I have a torus, not just a, any compact Lie group, they are all one-dimensional. Uh, one-dimensional representations, and so each, um, each one-dimensional representation is, is specified by a character of, of the torus. Okay, so... A complex one-dimensional, one I'm sorry, yes. Yes, this is one of the... Yes, yes, complex dimension, uh, complex one-dimensional. Okay, so in fact, I'll write that right now, yes, so... So I'll write it as E alpha. Okay, how do I want to write this? Okay, I'm sorry for the complicated notation, but I write it like this. So here's the first copy of C. Here's the second copy, etc. And I have as many as half the rank, sorry, half the real dimension of M, yeah? So alpha, this is terrible, I'm sorry, half the real dimension of M, P. Okay, so I have that many. Copies. Okay, where? Yeah, so this is what I was saying earlier. I can, so there are different ways to say this. I can think about it as a character. I'm going to think about it as a weight in the dual of the Lie algebra. Okay. Oh. Sorry, hang on. Um, Uh, and so that means, sorry, uh, yes, otherwise I would have otherwise to have. you have, you have a one-dimensional, I mean, trivial. Yes, I think and that's that right. Will give you I think you're. But since all are, all, all are, 
isolated, you only have this. Thank you. That's exactly yeah. That's exactly right. Complex one dimensional that's that's coming from the isolated. Thank you. Thank you. I didn't think through that, that through, but yes, that's right. Yeah. Thanks for the question. Yeah. And you haven't mentioned anything about this and except it's a manifold data solution. Yes. Well, so I okay, I mean, I mean I'm assuming that the M so so far I'm assuming that MT is nice enough that I have an injection. I start an injection and I'm assuming that this I mean this is a strong assumption. Yeah, so, so, so far that's what I'm assuming. Yeah, so I'm not assuming symplectic. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah. This, this complex structure on the standard space just comes from Oh, I see what you mean. Uh, um, so let's see. So what is the actual question? So your question might be, um, given the assumptions I have so far, is it always true that I have an almost complex structure on the manifold? Is that, is that? I only need it at the points. I only need it at the points. So I don't think I need anything at all, right? It's, it's, it's just at the point. So the presentation level. So it's, yeah. So I don't need to worry. Which is to say, another way to say is, um, yeah, that, yeah. So when I write C here, I, I just mean it, uh, on the linear algebra level at the tangent space. Yeah. yeah. So have this assumption one and this consequence of this interdimensionality. Uh, it's valid for any solution action of the forest. You don't need to assume injectivity to have this. Yeah. Oh, I see what you mean. Just to have this. Yeah, yeah. Sure, I think that, yeah. Any yeah, sure, sure, sure. This, this, yeah. Yeah, sure, yeah that's that, that, yeah. I mean, this, this part, this part is okay. Yes. That's why I'm saying uh, this complex structure on this complex space has nothing to do with it. With anything, yes. With anything else, that's right. Yes. Uh, right. So, uh, really, I'm just after these guys. <laughs> okay, so where these guys are in, so I will think about them here. Okay, they're the, 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 the lattice inside the dual of the Lie algebra. These are called the isotropy weights, the T isotropy weights. Okay, all right. Um, so please just tell me when I should stop. Just, just tell me. Maybe I write. <laughs> okay, okay. next assumption is that at every one of these isolated points, I look at that isotropic representation, I look at those weights, and the requirement that I place, and this is also a very strong condition, okay, I should require that the isotropy weights are pairwise linearly independent I what I mean I view them in this vector space that's a strong assumption I'm sorry Sure. Um, so, an example. Okay. So here I look at the full uh, S1 cross S1 acting on P1 cross P1 in the U in the obvious way. This one acts on this, and this one acts on that. 
Okay? Now let me redraw the squares that I was drawing earlier. So the squares that I was drawing, er drawing earlier, is uh, there's some relation to what I'm saying here. Because so for example, for at the North Pole, North Pole, yeah, then, okay, I'm sorry, I might get my signs incorrect. Okay, but up to sign, up to sign, you can actually check, okay, so at the North Pole, I'm looking at the North Pole here and the North Pole here, and I'm looking at the, uh, I'm looking at the representation of S1 cross S1 on, at the tangent space of the North Pole, North Pole. Now, that tangent space decomposes in the obvious way into one, 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 one dimensional space corresponding to this P1 and the other one corresponding to that P1. And the way I have defined the action, this factor, so if I, okay, pause slow down. Okay, so let us now look only at the subspace of this tangent space corresponding to this P1. Is that okay? So I'm, I'm looking at the tangent space to P1 cross P1 at the north pole, north pole, but I focus only on this direction. On this direction, by definition, this S1 acts trivially. Okay, so there should be no weight corresponding to this S1. But this one, by definition, I'm just doing the standard action, just spinning around by weight one. So it should be weight one for this S1. Okay? So then, of course, now what I write is just a question of conventions and how you write things. But so if I choose variables U1 for this S1 and U2 for this S1, it would just, I would write just U1. It's just weight one for the S1 action. So I just have a constant one times the polynomial variable U1. So the fact that it is weight one, just the standard spinning action, is, is corresponding to the fact that the coefficient I take is one. One times u1. Whereas, now if we look at the direction corresponding to this p1, then it's the opposite, yeah? This one acts trivially, this one acts with weight one or minus one. Uh, uh, so, so it should be u2. It is just one times u2. So therefore my two isotropy weights are u1, and U2. And so they're orthogonal in, in, in R, R2, shall we say. And so, of course, they are linearly independent. And this is corresponding in this picture. I could just think about this, being in the, this picture being in uh, T2, star, if you like. Okay, and literally, I'm going along. I'm going along one. So again, up to sign. I apologize. <laughs> um, so I'm looking at this coordinate being u1 and this coordinate direction being u2. And as you see, um, I have drawn the picture precisely so that the edges are exactly going along in the direction of my weights. So this is u1 and this is u2. Is the solution uh, different in saying that the action of the torus around the uh, topologically conjugate with the action of the torus in the CN, TN and CN, and the origin? Uh, topolo okay, so I don't know the meaning of topologically conjugate. I mean, it's the same. Topologically is the same. I want to compare uh, the standard action of the TN on CN around the origin. It rotates everything. Right? So that's a, there's a, there's a fixed point for the origin. Um, and I want to compare the, what can happen around the, the fixed point. The, the uh, so again, okay, so I should stop now, I think, but um, because there's, uh, but, but um, I'm a little nervous to, to, again, I'm still, sorry, still a little nervous about what you mean by topologically the same. Like, for example, I could have an action just of S1 on C, which is just acting by weight 1, yeah? And that's the standard, and that's yes, the, what you discussed. That's a standard, that's a standard S1 acting on the standard C. But then I could hear, that I, I, I could see, for example, I could, I could spin by weight 5, okay. for example. And then if I take the quotient, then I get an overfold in one example, whereas in the other, so I'm not sure what is meant by topologically the same. I'm not sure. Okay, so here, this, the rank of the acting group is the same as the complex dimension of this guy, but this right hand side dimension can be much bigger. Yes, than that's a, thank you very much. That's your, another reason. Your, your point might not be, I mean, you are asking whether the, the point would be TN, TN X on CN, that's the, but that's in general, <coughs> TK X on CN. You can have an isolated point in the new dimension bigger. 
Yes. Yes, yes, yes. yes abs and I will give you an so example. That's why yes. Uh, linearly dependentness is uh, an outcome theory. Yes. So but okay, I should, so I should so stop. Uh, I have, no, not at all. No, no. It's, it's much better with questions. Okay. So, uh, in fact, I did not finish what I thought I would finish today. So, I guess tom uh, next tomorrow, time, not yeah, tomorrow, tomorrow, we will. Tomorrow is 4 p.m. Tomorrow is 4 p.m. Yes, 4 p.m. So, I will just continue where I ended today, tomorrow. Okay, very good. Thank you very much, everybody.